We got to get into it. 9.30. I'm about to put the kid to bed. I get a notification, and it's a... Are we calling them sham wows? I don't know if there's a real official name for I, it. It's somebody tagged... I, I just seen it, and somebody also DM'd me, like, the tweet of it. They're calling it a shamber alert. I saw that, too. That's not bad. That's not bad. That's funny that Let's someone workshop DM'd you That's to not trade. Too bad. They didn't DM me to trade. Oh. They DM me to comment that somebody said Shamber Alert, okay. but I already kind of seen it. Shamber or Alert. Shamber Alert. Starts off, and it's the Knicks are nearing a trade to get Car Anthony Towns. Whoa. No details. Just that. What could that mean? Yeah. I mean, you if, knew it just deductive mean. reasoning. You understood yeah. that Julius Randle has to be in it. <laughs> but it was like, okay, what else? Is there more draft capital? Who else is yeah. in it? And it ends up being Dante DiVincenzo in a first. And then Daquan Jeffries and some other draft capital goes to the Charlotte Hornets who get in and make the money match. The Charlotte Hornets have done it like three times this offseason, by Shout the way. Shout out to them. Just helping people out. Helping people out. The Reggie Jackson trade. Yeah, they'll so come back so around and they'll get help. Mm -hmm. out. Before this, how did everybody, because you said you kind of like, you're about to put um, your daughter to bed and everything like that. I was literally like watching a stream. I was watching Devin's stream and somebody came in. It was Momento came in the chat. He said, cat to the Knicks. And anything, I, anytime I see something in like a Twitch chatter and thing, like I just gotta fact check it because I'm not gonna just believe it. Right. And it was the first thing that popped up, and I was like, "We actually got something. <laughs> we got something to do. We got something to talk about." September 27, 2023. What happened, Derek? Last year, the exact day. Was that the Dame trade? Dame got traded a couple of days before training camp. <laughs> my, my boy, he got those those spidey senses. <laughs> <laughs> those spidey senses. I was I was playing the game. He got the date tattooed on him. He do. All right. On his and left, then the eventual Larry O'Brien for the for yep. the Bucks, and that's the right cheek. Yeah, um, I was playing the game, not really playing, but I've been doing a Clippers series, and I was just doing some things like, man, I'm trying to figure out a rotation of who we should trade for, just casually, just doing something. And Derek is like, P. I'm like, what's up? He like, you on your phone? I said, nah. He said, don't check your phone. Don't check your phone. I said, okay. What's going on? He said. He's going so slow about it, though. He would have he would have been able to accomplish whatever he was trying to accomplish if he just spilled the beans or whatever. <laughs> but he's talking like, "All right, I just want to see your head up. Just don't touch your phone." I'm like, "Okay, all right, don't touch your phone. You ain't looking at your phone, right?" <laughs> the way you were describing it, like in the Discord <laughs> last night, it definitely felt like you didn't know where he was going. I didn't with know it where he was all. going, but he took so long. I said, "Man, I'm checking my phone." <laughs> and as soon as I made eye contact with my phone and it opened, it said. Car Anthony Towns, Knicks, and then I've clicked on it and it showed me the whole details. <laughs> and I told Derek, I'm gone, about to record this video. I'll be back. I was so about that's to ask you, out. what do you think a package of Julius Ranto and Dante DiVincenzo would get you? Mm. Yeah. If you as a Knicks fan, what would you want? Yeah, you took so long to say that one <laughs> sentence. I know, I did. You took so long, because I was trying to <laughs> let you have your I wasn't yeah. going to check my phone. That's but not a kept, bad exercise either, though. He kept going, and I'm like, I got to check, bro. I got to check. <laughs> but, um, yeah, man, um, love these type of trades at this type of time because Lord knows that we've been needing and wanting something. So shout out to the NBA, two back-to-back -back years. Carl Anthony Towns, love, love, love to acquire him. Uh, we just ranked the power forwards. I think all of us talk highly about Cat um, from, you know, buying into what the Timberwolves was doing, playing a four next to Rudy, um, I, I think it's even tremendous on how well he has handled them transitioning from it being his franchise and his team to Anthony Edwards' team or whatever. Going through a lot, we talked about him being hurt and jumping into the playoffs, the efficiency, the shooting, everything. We we know what we're getting with Cat. Now, on the flip side, what a lot of people have said to me personally and that I've seen reacting to the trade that I want to speak on real quickly I love Dante DiVincenzo. I think all Knicks fans love Dante DiVincenzo. I think the organization loved Dante DiVincenzo, and nobody wanted to trade Dante DiVincenzo. But when we talk about a talent like Carl Anthony Towns, after the offseason we just had, I don't understand why people is talking about Dante DiVincenzo. Mm -hmm. I think that it has a lot to do with the moments of last season. I think that fans, for good reason, become attached to players, especially a player that's on a team-friendly deal and yeah. got – I want to say gathered through the mud, but like Dante DiVincenzo is a role player. Then the playoffs, he had a 30-point game. He had a game winner for the Knicks. So you get that type of attachment for a player. But I don't mind it as much, and he he was your best shooter too. Because on this roster, let's say you went into the, the season with the roster that was there two days ago. He wasn't He's having... getting like 20-something minutes a game. That's yeah. why they have so him. many wings over there. He, he occasionally can bring the ball up the court, but you're not using him as a backup point guard. So, I mean, Ian Begley even tweeted about it. 
Um, Which th- I told y'all last night. That he wasn't necessarily ex- happy about his potential role with the Knicks. Mm-hmm. Rightfully so, He was by coming the way. off a career year. Rightfully so. Mm-hmm. This is the other world of the NBA that people don't think about. Like, this isn't... This doesn't make Dante DiVincenzo a bad person or a selfish player, but if you had a career year with those moments and you acquire Mikael Bridges, you, you know what I'm saying? It's looking like your minutes is going to go down, rightfully so. Mc, uh, Dante DiVincenzo ain't a max player either, so it ain't no. like he's like, oh, I got my bag. Yeah. Yeah. You know, OG Ananobi's thought process, said, we got Cab, we got Mikael, but I got my bag, so I'm going to be straight. So, I, I mean, I, this is the life of a, of, of a guy that's a role player. Here's the exact quote. Even Tenzo is probably coming off the bench this season. Bridges would have likely taken his spot in the starting lineup. I can say confidently that Even Tenzo didn't exactly love the idea of fewer minutes slash a, a reduced role this season. He was coming off a career year and helped the team win a ton of games when they were shorthanded. Yeah, I mean, I can understand that mindset, especially when you come out, like P said, he ain't got the long bag security of an OG on an OB or something like that. So, like... He still got a family to feed. He still got to continue getting those checks coming in. He got to go out there and play. When you go to a reduced role, your numbers drop and all that drop. So now you ain't got the leverage in all your negotiations because they going to go based off recency, and you ain't really got much. So his current contract is through the end of the 2027 season, $12.5 million in that last year, 11 for this year, and 11 9 next year. Um, so, again, very team-friendly contract. He's got a few more years left on it. I mean, if he, when he goes to the Minnesota Timberwolves, there's a world early on where he does start uh, because Julius Randle probably won't be ready for the season openers from what reports are saying. So there could be a world where it's, they go with the smaller ball lineup and allow Rudy Gobert to be the true five on that team where it's Conley and Dante DiVincenzo, McDaniels, Rudy, Rudy Gobert. But I can also see the argument of just let Nas Reed start because he's also Please. amazing at basketball. Please. Um, but I, I think his role is going to be reduced gonna on, be, regar- regardless yeah, of which probably of the two be, teams he's on. He might get some more minutes, but it's probably going to be around the same thing. But mm-hmm. yeah, they are going to need have his moments too. They're going to need his shooting. Though. I mean, he's definitely going to close out a lot of yeah, games. They're going to need the shooting for yeah. him. And I think they they're space it. they're trying to from from this. I don't like the trade from Minnesota. Does anybody like the trade from Minnesota? I don't either. Okay, cool. Um, don't like it, but we understand it. I understand it because the ownership group has never paid this much money before, and we knew it was inevitable. We told Derek two years ago it felt like that Carthony Towns was inevitably going to get traded. Um, we told him recently too. Over somebody and over again. tweeted me uh, that, ironically, you w- we were talking about lifers, mm-hmm. and you said cat potentially, and then they said that I replied, well, unfortunately, that's not up to him. That's literally what somebody tweeted me last mm. night. <laughs> like, you j- y'all just t- – and I'm like, oh, I did not remember that because we do so much stuff, but – Uncle Mike is going to be 37 at the start of the season. They drafted a, what, 19-year-old point guard as well um, this year. I think this is a world where they're trying to usher in Anthony Edwards full time one um, while Mike Conley is on his decline and while Rob Dillingham is on his way up. So there could be a lot of light. So it is Dante and Ant together with McDaniels, Nas, and then Rudy Gobert. Yeah, and they're good enough to make that work regardless to the regular season, too, until Mike, uh, Mike Con- I was about to say Uncle Mike, Mike Conley comes back. And they just get healthy, but but you just named a lineup that don't got Julius Randle. I was talking yeah. about uh, start of the season back. until okay. Julius Randle comes back. Yeah, yeah. I was Not, talk, and I can. I'm sorry. Can you talk about what it looks like when Julius Randle was back and healthy? It looks nasty. Uh, yeah. I, I think that's the only way I can describe it. I mean, it took the Carl Anthony Towns and Rudy Gobert thing a year to look it good, did. and that's with the great spacing. Mm-hmm. So I can't imagine like. There was a report from um, John Krasinski. Is that the guy for the Minnesota Timberwolves? I think that's how you pronounce his name. I I always, you know, those names are kind of interesting. It's Um, Chris something. Regardless, he was talking about how, in their mind, with Minnesota, this increases the playoff window of the Minnesota Timberwolves. And I think that's true. Really, Julius Randle's still a really good basketball player. This team should be a playoff team. But it also limits that that ceiling that we thought they could have. Last year, they were legitimate contenders. They were in the conference finals and ran out of gas. And I I don't think they have that. With Julius Randle on the roster. It seems very easy to scheme against so when you're talking about playoff time. And, like, Julius Randle has shown he's not even a playoff riser. He hasn't had a great playoff series this entire mm-hmm. career. So, and I just yeah. think one thing that they miss now, all three bigs at one point was always able to play together and had this great cohesiveness and this fit. Now, when you look at that starting lineup of Julius and um, Rudy, that sh- it just looks so nasty on paper. Like, I... And it's kind of hard to even say bring Julius off the bench it's and put it in Nas. But, like, for me personally, as the head coach, if I'm Chris Finch, that's just my best fit to start off games. I don't want to start off slow all the time, maybe with Julius at the forward next to Rudy. 
Because then teams are just that's just mm-hmm. so much. They just gonna pack the paint on ant. I think I feel like you moving a little too fast. Like even the cat thing, we we knew it was gonna probably be ugly to start off with. I'm not saying it's gonna be the perfect thing, but like they can still make it work. One thing oh. I did like though was yeah. the Chris Finch thing. How they said uh, he did have a connection with Julius Randle back in New Orleans when he was there, and mm-hmm. obviously you know Julius Randle kind of popped off in New Orleans, mm-hmm. and maybe that was a little bit of a connection there. So maybe he could bring something a little bit different out of Julius Randle, or maybe just get him playing back at his kind of like near full potential. I'm not mad. I guess I I don't hate the Julius. I don't love the Julius Randle fit. But I think because they are such talented players, they'll be able to make it work to, again, win a bunch of regular That's season I games. Yeah. Um, I just, just think it just limits their ceiling as far yeah. as being a championship contender, especially as Ant continue to rise. And you basically stump it. You just stump it. And it's just it's frustrating because Minnesota's really been contenders two years in their franchise's history. You got the one year with KG mm-hmm. and then last year. And now it's like, all right, we did that. Now we're okay with winning 47 games every single season and yeah. get into the second round and maybe making another conference finals, but never winning a championship. Yeah. Julius Randle's been ass in the playoffs. Like, so, like one of the times he's dealt, he dealt with a real injury. Like I, the I first give him one, the first one when D Rose had to come the, in and <laughs> get, get a crack. We'll talk about D Rose later, but I'll get him, I get him to pass there. But for the most part, like people talk about Carl Anthony Towns, just playoff resume and it ain't amazing. But it's leagues ahead of what Julius Randle has been in his playoff career. I mean, we do have a game seven of Carthony Towns being basically phenomenal against the Denver Nuggets. Like, I just hate it. It this and it's all like, I don't know, frugalness from the the ownership group. And Minnesota Timbers were mad at me. Minnesota Timbers fans were mad at me when I told them when they got eliminated from the playoffs, they're going to have to make the decision either this year or next year. And they're like, no, nah, man, they can afford to be this. They said that they were uh, – he said that he's not selling the team because Alex Rodriguez was going to be the one to make the Carthony Towns straight. Didn't matter. It happened. We saw Carthony Towns grow up with the Timberwolves. He came into the league, he had these big-ass feet, and he was clumsy as hell, and then he turned himself to an All-NBA player. He's gone through two different rebuilds, and the one year that they were contenders, they said, thank you, but we shipping your ass away. They didn't, That's the business, What and it else sucks. did they have to trade? They weren't trading Anthony Edwards. Rudy Gobert, I feel Jayden like they'd rather keep him. Jaden McDaniels, I think he's on the side of, like, we'd rather keep Jaden yeah, at they, this well, point. Well, clearly, but I'm just, you yeah. asked what else did they have to trade. The things that yeah. they had to trade was Jaden McDaniels or Carthony Towns. It's one of the two, mm-hmm. especially because Jaden McDaniels' contract is huge and it starts this season. Um, again, it was inevitable. I don't I don't mind them trading Cat. It sucks. It's part of the business. I just don't like what they get back, man. Yeah. I don't like what they get back, and I think you also made a good point. Like, we, we talked about this since they signed Jaden McDaniels to the contract, that this was – going to happen and then they signed Nas Reed we knew that it was going to happen but I thought it would be prolonged because of the success that you had like even today I woke up and um it was a Twitter account I mean not Twitter account it's an Instagram account that I'll, I'll figure out later um where we was going back and forth because I was I had commented on it because he had a mock trade of like Durant going to the Timberwolves and Cat being traded or something like that mm. and uh Hoops Empire and the trade was Kevin Durant going to this is when the playoffs First of all, ended. After they ended, right? Yeah, this is this is months ago. But uh, it still it still makes me mad because it's another Kevin Durant situation where he got his ass buzzed and, and he went, went to, to the team. That's true. <laughs> so um, I don't like but that I one. commented on it and yeah. said, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And right. like uh, thousands of people liked it, and you know what I'm saying almost three thousand people liked it, and mm-hmm. they was kind of going at him for mocking the trade up. And my point wasn't that. And today he said something like, "Well," and I'm like, "Hey, if it's the Knicks, then I don't mind it." But when you have that much success, because I thought this team was going right back to that level of success. I thought yeah. they were potentially to go, uh, potentially would go right back to the Western Conference Finals, probably them versus Thunder, um, just to start the season. And I thought they were going to have a really good chance to be one of the top teams out west. And again, you know the trade has to happen, but I would see because if you could do this trade, I mean, if you undo this trade and you do this again, and they for some reason go to the finals or win the finals or whatever, however you want to picture it then all of the money that you're paying becomes worth it. And you don't, mm-hmm. you know, it doesn't matter. Or even if you still have to trade it, you know, it's like, hey, we trade it. But to do it coming off that season and not, to not give it another chance, it just sucks for the yeah. fan base, man. It I sucks for sure the fan base. I thought for sure it was going to be one more year. Me yeah. too. At I least thought it was going to be right? one more.